Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and they are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am your host for today's activities. I'm tickled to present Peggy Spear to you today because she's going to bring us art about buses. And she works with the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. So, Peggy, show us your buses. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's fine. All right. Y'all see that? Yes. 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 All right. So, we have, you know, I was thinking school buses, you know, we were talking about school, but I'm not going to show you one school bus. How about that? We have a bunch of, of photography actually um, centered around buses. You know, whether it's the focus or not the focus, buses appear in a lot of our particularly photographic artworks in our collection, especially with street photography. It really seems to be the focus um, of a lot of artists' city life pictures. So we're, we're taking it back long, long ago to 1912. And it's Carl Struess. We've looked at tons of his photographs before, but we've really looked at his photographs of when he was living in California and working in cinema with Cecil B. DeMille and his wife and daughter. They had the cute Christmas cards that he would make and things like that. So that's how we typically look at Carl Struess. But before he moved west, he was a New Yorker and he um, was very involved in the photography scene there with um, Alfred Stieglitz. We, mentioned his name before, was kind of running a lot of the photography wing in, and art wing in New York. So Carl Struess was really interested in exploring New York. And so this, there's not much to this photograph. Um, a lot of museum collections have this photograph just because it, this is when photography was really starting to gain more and more traction as a fine art versus a documentation. So we see a big old bus. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like it's a double decker. Double decker. Yeah, it does. And it's a big old Mercedes. Yeah. And next to it is a horse. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and it looks like we're seeing the back of the bus over here too. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. So there were um, tourists way back then. Yeah, it would be kind of a funny commute. I mean, I'm sure it was a commute for some people, but it feels very touristy. Mm -hmm. And New York streets seem very narrow there. I mean, I know they Yes, they are. Well, they can't get any wider because every time no. they re rebuild, they rebuild on the same footprint. Yeah. They just look, I guess, because there's so many cars going different directions, it just feels narrow. Yes. Well, there are at least three three lanes moving. Mm -hmm. Do I see three lanes moving or is it two lanes? I see, I see four lanes. I, almost, I think I see four because there's this guy who seems to be in his own lane. This, this, then this. Ooh. And that looks like parking. That yeah. looks like parking. Yeah. Yes. Good morning, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Nancy, today we're talking about buses. So this is our first photograph and there's not much to it but just we're looking at an old bus in New York City and the bus York, is right here New York City is old enough that you can see the skyline down the street oh, cool. yeah. yeah Fifth Avenue straight down so the lighting's very interesting it it is. talk about it tell me it's your perspective is is narrowing but the lighting is on a curve. Oh, yeah. Like it's coming from over here. Yes. The cross street. Yeah, and, he, and his perspective is interesting. Now that you point that out, it's almost like he's on the back of another bus given his vantage point. Yes. That would make sense. It'd be a bumpy ride, especially with a camera that big. Oh, know. yeah. But yeah, you're right. He's, at, he's not ground level. No. Interesting, yeah. I hadn't caught that yet. Y'all are good. Yeah, I didn't. 
See, it's fun looking at artwork with you guys because the things that you notice are always so different than the things that I first noticed. So I love these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Peggy, mm -hmm. could you tell me a little bit what platinum print means? Ooh. Don, I cannot tell you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll I, I, I want to say... It was a more elaborate process because the artists were more interested in using their hand to make it more of a fine art. That was okay. part of this movement of elevating art to the same, or photography to the same level of sculpture and painting. Okay. So I don't know the details about platinum printing and palladium printing, there's, there was this like when a lot of these photographers were experimenting with printing processes to elevate the art. So I can't tell you palladium? more than that. Did you say palladium? Is yes. that right? Yeah, that, that's a different, that's another. Um, wow. Yeah. That's, these are kind of weird elements. Don's got yeah. some homework. Yes, I know what we'll be doing this afternoon. Right. We're going well, to take a visit to the, to the periodic uh, table of elements. Oh, I'll have to, um, I can mail you guys. This is a part of our old branding, so I can't tell anyone I'm sending you this. But um, we it talks about a lot of the different printing processes. And so there's platinum print, gelatin silver print, um, all different printing processes that were being used and developed um, since the beginning of photography. And it's really interesting as someone oh. who has a, a chemical mind brain. I'll, I'll mail this to you. Okay. Do you, do you have everybody's address? Or? I do. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank Sweet. you. Thank you. Thank you. That'd you, be baby. great. Yeah, of course. All right. So we're going to leave this <laughs> photograph and cast. <gasps> Isn't it so fun? We move directly into abstract. I know. Whiplash. You didn't know it was coming, and I got Flat you. Stanley. I, yeah. Yes. Might as well get out. So this is a lithograph that was created at, of course, Cameron Lithography, um, the studio in LA. And this artist's name is Alan Jones. He is from England um, and was well known in the British pop art movement in the, in the 1960s. So because he had notoriety, that was typically how artists were selected to go to, to Tamarin. Um, they were typically artists of different mediums, sculptors, painters, and then they were invited to work in this lithography workshop. Um, this was again done as an attempt to elevate lithography as a so, fine art. Yeah. So uh, what do we see? We see a big red bus with blue wheels. Big red bus with blue wheels. Knowing that he's British, what kind of big red bus? That would be a... Uh... Uh, what you call a double decker bus? Yes, and the technical name I've never heard this before. AEC Route Master. Have you ever heard that? No, no. I hadn't either. So the AEC Route Master, which is basically the double decker, was created in 1954. This this iteration of it, and so um, it nothing felt more iconically British, which is part of that pop. Something so recognizable. It's just part of your everyday life, then the red bus. And so <coughs> his pop movement, he created abstract versions of the red bus. And uh, Europe, particularly England, went gaga for these prints. I and will he, tell you, I went to, I, I landed in London once and I noticed on the way down as we were descending, <laughs> Uh -huh. I said to myself, boy, they sure do like red down there <laughs> <laughs> because of all the bus and the, and the red uh, telephone booths, too. That's right. Yeah. Everything the, seemed to be red. Yeah, and the, even the guards, the Buckingham Palace Bucking, guards, the beef yeah. eaters, there's a lot of red wherever you yes. wherever you're standing. Yeah, so this, this was like unmistakably the bus that everybody knew and everybody universally knew as the bus in England. So he gained a lot of notoriety um, for this series. Um, and what was kind of cool was that he, it, you cannot tell in this reproduction, but he, the paper's cut. There's no paper there. It's not like he just left it white. 
he cut little squares out of the bottom to give that lift of where the wheel wow. is. Kind wow. of so this is one of five. Here's another one from that series. And then you can see a little more clearly where that hard line is where he cut the, the paper. <coughs> That's one way. Yeah. So one of five series and of a series of five, he um he focused on the bus. And so you can see the windows, the red, the circles. I mean, he says one of um he liked it because it was simplified and balanced, but he was still able to create the symbol of what it was. So just using big bright red strokes because of that pop movement, people automatically knew what that red would have signified. Mm -hmm. I love so, it. You, Go ahead, Don. So does, do you think this is a full picture of a bus or just the, hat, less, the back of the bus? Because there's no doors to get into it anywhere. Yeah, it's definitely not the full bus. We're not seeing the driver. We're not even seeing the, the double decker. Yeah. Just, you know? So yeah, it's definitely a portion of it that he captured, but just gave us enough to know exactly what he's capturing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that he labeled it fuel, I think that's- so I know, that's yeah. the thing that made me think this is the back of the bus, not the- Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, he was, and he really was interested in color play. So this was a perfect example. He's just using primary colors red, blue, yellow, I mean, there's some black, and then layering to create, you know, the, the secondary colors. Yeah. Very simple, but really effective. Does this make you feel cheery or does it make you feel sad? I think this could be used as a warning sign for people to say, look at this, it's supposed to tell me to go do go somewhere safe. Oh, okay. It's like, like, almost, it's like a stop sign. Yeah, the red definitely grabs your attention. It makes me happy. It, it makes me happy. It's just so cheery. The and lady. The, oh, the late, yeah. The lady doesn't have a head. Uh-uh. Doesn't oh, have not... a head. And then here you see another lady. Here's a part yeah. of her head that was missing in the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yeah, this is the front yeah. bus. This okay. is the other side. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And so this, this, I said, you know, this is, these are two of five um, in the series and the, the larger series is called fleet of buses. So there are the other ones, this was the most iconic, it seemed of the, of the series. Um, and the other one, there's one, um, I should have pulled all of them. I don't know why I didn't. There's one of like actually inside the bus and you can see a woman's legs crossing like she's sitting in her seat. So he, he plays with the different aspects of what it is to be on a bus. Uh, but I feel of the two, I really like this one more, I think. And it's pretty large, it's 25 by 22. So it's got wow. a, a weighty presence to it. Did he do them all five relatively quickly? I don't know that, that yes, in that um, the typical Tamarin studio stay would be between four and six weeks okay so he worked through them pretty quickly it wasn't like he, over years he started accumulating these he, he did them pretty quickly okay. um but he he had he did 30 <coughs> impressions so there aren't a ton in the world but they um you can still find them on auction on like first did sometimes you know different um auction websites you can see these appear on market every once in a while all right so now we're leaving these really fun funky buses i mean and it feels like it really does feel pocket if you can think of andy warhol and his yeah. Yeah. brillo boxes and um, mm -hmm. his big old flowers it's of that same mindset but this was happening okay. in in um england so using what is pop you know pop culture in england Nancy, what do you think of this one? Do you like them? I like them. Yeah. Cheerful. Very cheerful. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. That one kind of looks like it's lopped over. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, back heavy? Like it, yeah. that hay bales. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Kind of hanging over, yeah. The wheels are what grabbed me first in this. It's almost like, like you feel like you're almost. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Twilight Zone, yeah. Outer Limits. Google Limits. All right, now totally different vibe, bringing you back to black and white photography but uh, of a much later era. This is um, one of a, of a larger series that Anthony Hernandez did called Public Transit. And where he was really focusing on the bus stops, not necessarily the bus. Mm -hmm. So while we're not seeing a bus, the bus is still very much a part of this story. So what do you see? Uh. I see uh, people on a bus bench waiting for a bus to come along. Does this feel welcoming? Does it feel isolated? Does it feel happy, sad? What do you? What kind of emotions do you feel? It, it kind of seems kind of isolated because there's, there's not a whole lot around them. It's like a parking lot behind them. Yeah, an empty parking lot. Maybe it's later in the day after the workers have all left from the parking lot and these are wait people are waiting for the bus yeah yeah it, it feels kind of isolated which was the point uh this photographer in this it throughout his his ooh, his collection of art but in this particular series he was really interested in capturing kind of the the people on the fringe mm -hmm. and um so people of color, people of lower socioeconomic um, background, and how this is in LA. And for a city that's a massive city, sprawling city, you do not see any people. You barely see any moving cars. That's right. <clears throat> and these people sitting on the bus aren't even interacting with each other. No, not really. You see the family, but then you see the African-American woman just sitting there and no one's talking to each other. Oh, yeah. So did you say what city this is in? Yes, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. So I would, I say it again? I would guess that this is a food desert. Doesn't it look it? Yes. Like there's no place around that's uh, welcoming or hospitable. No, no, no. I mean, it really feels between the empty parking lot, the lack of, of engagement with the people, and then the open <clears> road, and like just kind of these look pretty run down. It doesn't look like you said, Martha, welcoming. It yeah. feels like a total debt, like a what would be a probably a food desert type of mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And so he's really focusing on the underclass of LA, which was, you know, people are always interested in the the glamour and the glitz of LA. This right. is like a whole different version of LA that he was really trying to capture with street documentation. And what's interesting with this particular series is Hernandez is using a large format camera and a tripod. So they saw him there. They yeah. were not at all discreet in these photographs. And they don't even seem to be engaging. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, taking a picture in Los Angeles. What's yeah, I mean... Another just another day at the bus stop. Yeah, that's right. So he was well, this idea of urban um, isolation. He's done yeah. multiple series um, of people and of the environment in LA that really speak to this urban isolation. Yes. So, what size picture was this, uh, Peggy? Say that again. What size picture is this? Twelve by eighteen. Twelve by eighteen. This photographer is still um, alive and kicking, and we actually had an exhibition of his, uh, oh gosh, I want to say maybe five years ago now. And so I was lucky enough to get dinner with him and the curator um, and his wife at a restaurant downtown in downtown Fort Worth. And he's the sweetest man, very quiet. His wife was like chatty chat, and he was the quiet. <laughs> it, it was a really fun dynamic. And he teaches and um they still, they still live in California. And so the, the series that we did when he was, um, when he came here for the exhibition, his exhibition, 
was a series focused on, I want to say right outside San Bernardino area, the deserty area right outside LA. There have been um, developments that had started to go up, housing developments that started to go up. And then with the housing collapse in 2018, totally stopped. And so it's kind of eerie, these I don't know if any of you ever watched it arrest watched arrested development where it's like literally <laughs> the de- like the how the development arrested and it's kind of eerie but speaking to this urban isolation where there are houses but no one's living there mm-hmm. very very eerie so he he's a very cool man but this series was uh, much earlier in his career speaking to some of the, the ideas he has always been interested in yeah so this this painting was taken about 42 years ago i mean now that I'm, I'm getting older, I start paying attention to how, how, how long it's been since. I, I remember 1979, a, a much younger me. But, uh, <laughs> Did you take the bus anywhere? Uh, no. Uh, Myra and I were married and living in Kansas. Okay. And, uh, and then we've, I got, uh, I, I, we, all, we both graduated from uh, university, uh, Kansas State University. Oh, cool. And we moved down to Fort Worth, and I went to work or general, Di- general dynamics. Okay. Wow. Did you take the bus when you were living in Fort Worth at all? No. no. Yeah, the public transit here is really not great. So I yeah. can't imagine yeah. that many years ago it was any better. I took the bus. Did you? I did um, in, in Fort, Fort Worth, Worth and in Dallas. Um, and, but the, my Fort Worth experience was that my I was in between houses. My house was being built and I was in an apartment. Uh-huh. And I was working in smack dab downtown Fort Worth on eighth uh, uh, eighth at eighth street. Okay. And the bus would go right by my building every day. Oh, how easy! So I just I would walk to the corner, get on, and get off right at the door. And oh. I loved it. I even started going to the Y. And getting, <laughs> getting, getting I, I'd go swimming and uh, uh-huh. heat and get yeah, exercise and all that before I'd even go to work in the morning oh, how it was on the bus line how cool yes yeah I um I, I love public transportation I lived in Rome for a while and the I lived on the bus I loved the bus um but it's cities that have really good public transportation make you love it when a city doesn't have it ironed out you really hate it yeah uh, yes yeah my experience with buses is that uh when we graduated from high school, Myra went to college in Fort Hayes, Kansas. And I went to college in Manhattan, Kansas. And the only way I could come visit her was when I'd take a, a Greyhound bus. Greyhound, uh, whenever yeah. I could save my money up for it. Uh-huh. But the, the nice thing about public transit, especially buses and trains, you can do work or you can read or you can, yeah. you can totally zone out <laughs> and decompress, which, um, that's the beauty of public transportation to me, especially after the, a day of work. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, I'm sure these, that, imagine probably some of the stress, stress and exhaustion if these people are coming from work or oh, yeah. having to go to a doctor's appointment. There's a lot of frustration and stress surrounded, surrounding public transportation because you're really at the mercy of whenever that bus shows up. Yeah. And as you and know, I, nothing in time. And it's out in the elements, the sun's yeah. beating down. Mm-hmm. Really good point, yeah. You mentioned something about this may be the end of the day, but I'm looking at the shadows. Yeah, the shadows. Like maybe one or two o'clock. Yeah. 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 So these are people who are unemployed or are going to look for jobs or have to go, go to court. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. got to go so, to traffic court. <laughs> Right, really. Totally different view of LA than what, you know, we yeah. typically think of when we think of LA. I feel sorry for the woman and all the children. Yeah. I know. I, and I'm curious if these two women are together. So at least she, it's a, an adult, a child, or if this is just they're sitting close enough that they don't know each other. Mm-hmm. All right, we've got one more. <gasps> oh my gosh. I know. Ooh. Groovy. Uh, you, I really was wishing uh, Phil and Paulette would be here today because this is the Dan Ryan Expressway in Chicago, and I think wow. uh, Phil's from Chicago, so 
I'm sure he had a tale or two about the buses in Chicago. But uh, pretty, pretty groovy picture, huh? Yes. Can you see the elements that are buses? Mm -hmm. At least three. Yes. Yeah, I see, yeah. Here and here, and the top of the bus, the and then she one. flips it upside down, and it's the, the side of the bus, but upside down. Then we got a top of the bus right here. Right. The front top of the bus down here, flipped upside down. Oh, wow. And we've got the, ups, uh, the side upside down of the bus. So it's almost oh. like you want to flip this whole side over and see. You got yeah. And then we've got the back top of the bus on this far right here. We also see trucks, moving yep. trucks. Yes, trucks. trucks. Um, and then you're noticing as much as the bus, you're noticing the bus as much as you're noticing the freeway itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what's creating that almost like it's been manipulated, swirled, but it's all artificial. Yeah. So she uses, she's using roughly two dozen frames and tightly packing them together, almost like this is like a contact sheet for photography when you would see all of the images that are on a roll of film. Mm -hmm. She's creating that effect, but she's actually, it's all different images that she's manipulated to create this illusion. This is really kind of fascinating mm -hmm. because it's a, uh, if, 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 what, if it didn't say Dan Ryan Expressway, uh, I probably would not be able to figure this out. But I, I've, I've been in Chicago a couple times. Mm -hmm. So I, I think at least once I was on the Dan Ryan Expressway. But uh, You probably were. It's, looking at a map, because I just was interested. I've been in Chicago a few times. I don't know my elbow from my head there. But it looked like it pretty much the straight shot down from North Chicago down to South Chicago. It's one of the, it's like the, the main drag highway yeah. freeway to get you from it's North and South. It's not like, yeah. 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 She was a um, Barbara Crane. You've probably heard her name before. She is, as our curator put it, um, America's one of America's most influential teachers and respected artists. So she's, um, very well known in the photography realm of art. And um, she's from Chicago herself. So she was very interested in documenting the city that she grew up in and she taught there and um, she lived a pretty long life. I think I want to say she died like she was 91 in, wow. in, the, two, in the 2000s. But uh, she was really interested in creating abstract of things that were familiar. And I think this is a perfect example of doing that. These are all things we can recognize upon closer yeah. examination. But like you all had the reaction I hoped for. I turned the slide and it was like, whoa, what am I looking at? This is, yeah. let, me, let me orient myself here because I don't know what I'm actually looking at. It was that way with the red too. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah. Oh, hi, Yetta. Hey. Hello, Hans. The internet came back. <laughs> Welcome. And, and it looks like movement. I feel a lot of movement with this. Definitely. Which is which is deliberate in that she's using those wavy lines, but when you're on a bus, you're moving as well. So it might not be what you're seeing out of the bus, but you're getting that sense of movement like you would have on a bus. Yeah. I'm really glad I have a, a magnifier so that I can see the fourth one from the right is more of the highway and less of, yes, and less of a bus. Yeah. And I'm just now understanding that this is, ac this is actually a piece of roadway mm -hmm. with uh -huh. an overhang. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. This is not some swirl that she made. This is a real road. Yeah. Yes. It is. Wow. But that was her, um, her talent, was that she was able to abstract things we were already familiar with and seeing every day. And so she was really um, trying to 
make us view things differently because of how she framed them or repeated them. Mm -hmm. That was her, her, she was very good at abstraction and she wanted to work in abstraction, but rooted in, in actual things. So she was really, um, this was very avant-garde, that she was always part of the cutting edge. Her art was typically well-received and she was well-known while she was alive and, and creating. Um, she did portrait photography as a way to support her family at one point. But then when her, all her kids were in school, she went back to being a teacher and creating and experimenting with these mm -hmm. abstract uh, ideas. And so this particular photograph is one from a series called Repeating. And, and you get it. Say, repeating. say that again, please. Repeating. repeating, okay. How big is it, Peggy? You know what? I don't have the dimensions written down for this one. I'm sorry. No, no problem. It does look like a contact sheet, but we know better, don't we? Yeah. yeah and that was deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. And she, so she says um, she loves putting things right side up and um, upside down. And huh. she loved the unrecognizable, but downright familiar. That's okay. <laughs> she must have been a hoot to know. Yeah. She seemed like quite the character. Her obit in um, the New York Times is, is a very kind one. So if you are interested in learning more about Barbara Crane, she, they spell some of her uh, career out and personality out there. Ooh. Interesting that that's the kind of thing you would read. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like to keep it morbid whenever I can, you know. I read the obits every day. Do you, oh, do you really? Yeah. You find a lot it's about good. people. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> and you can read in between the lines with some of the stuff. It's kind oh, of yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she was divorced, but they, the way they worded it in her obit was kind of funny. Like, once married... <laughs> with a lot of kids she I think she had like four or five kids and um it wasn't until her youngest was in preschool that she really started going back to her her creating um as more of a way for expression versus money since Yetta and Hans were late to the party would you mind rolling through these again with sure. a little uh, oh yeah sorry I just well, no wait I, I told him you were having trouble today yeah, oh. yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you guys are back and running. Yeah. Um, so am I. Ooh, oh, my. I bet. I bet. So we're, today was buses. If you didn't, this wasn't the best picture of a bus you walked in on, but here we are with buses. Um, we looked at this bus stop by a photographer based out of California who was really mm -hmm. interested in kind of the urban isolation that existed in in LA particularly, but this concept of the, not the marginalized, but those who are less represented, people of color, mm -hmm. people of mm -hmm. economic That's people. very interesting that there are absolutely no cars when you think of it, if you say it's Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So we, in, in the series, he photographed bus stops all over the city, um, mm -hmm. capturing this type of, of feel and scene. Then we talked about a, a British pop artist who was big in his day that created um, at the Tamarin Lithography Workshop, the one that's located in Los Angeles. Uh, he was invited to create uh, some lithographs. And so as a pop artist, he focused on something that was so iconically British, everybody knew what it was and it was a double-decker red bus. And so <laughs> here are two of the five prints that he did while he was there. That's funny. I know it's so cool. They're big too. I was telling you, it's 22 by 25. So they, it wow. would have been pretty neat. big. Mm -hmm. And then the first artwork, which is so ho hum compared to the other artworks we've looked at today, was um, just uh, this particular photographer, Carl Struis, who looked at in his Hollywood days where he was Street photographing from Central the Mill and on film mm -hmm. sets. But before right, he made it on the West Coast, he was an East Coast like dirt roller, and so here he's photographing the, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the big Mercedes oh, bus on the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I'm very sorry. These are always very nice times with you, Peggy. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I missed it. Well, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere far. I'll be back next week. 
Good. Right. And thank I like goodness. a bad penny. I'm going to keep turning up. And That's good. Um, good. Next week, we're doing fences. So fences. Fen oh, I fences. I need a word, and we will see what I find. Fences. So I'll be back next week. I hope all of you um, stay safe. If there are any more thunderstorms coming, I had no idea we were having them today. So um, be safe, and I'll see you all next week. Woke up to them. Thank bye, you, Peggy. Bye, Peggy. Bye, Peggy. Have a wonderful day.